Welcome to Metroid Dread. Metroid Dread has been very long awaited. And when I finished Fusion, I did not uh, discuss this really. But I mentioned that, uh, especially early on, that I felt like they had kind of written themselves into a corner with Fusion. Um, between effectively tidying up all of the various plot threads that had happened and introducing a number of things that were effectively permanent, but had already served their purpose, such as the fusion suit's whole gimmick being able to absorb X parasites, but making that now her permanent suit as well as, at least in my own opinion, the fusion suit design being dated. And on top of that, when you play a Metroid game, you have an idea about Samus, the character, what she looks like, and what you want to play as. So I always felt like they had written themselves into a, a bit of a corner because it was difficult to make a game following Fusion, given what they left themselves off as. And given that since Fusion came out, they've released a half dozen or more Metroid games, all taking place before Fusion, I'd say I'm not entirely incorrect. But I also knew that this time frame focused very heavily on Samus's story, the baby Metroid, her interactions with Mother Brain and Ridley, and there is only so much you can do with the amount of plot that they had in that very tiny area. So dis no matter how difficult it may be, they had to make a game following Fusion. And they could use that opportunity to set things right, or not right, but to set things onto a more forward path. To set things taking us out of the small loop that they'd made. Letting the Metroid series go on and expand Band. If they could do that, the universe would be their oyster. They could do whatever they wanted to do. Something I was unaware of for the longest time was the title Metroid Dread. Though I'd known we needed a game after Fusion, Metroid Dread has actually been in the, at least, the back of the minds of those at Nintendo since the Metroid Prime games. As there is a, I believe it was a secret, but a, a bit of a log you can find somewhere that actually mentions the Metroid Dread project. And it has been in the works in the background for a very long time, but it's never really amounted to anything. It's never been the game they wanted it to be. And that leads us to some of the more recent Metroid games. Nintendo has been experimenting with external developers and other people that they can work with. They went with, um, what was it, Team Ninja to make Other M, and I forget the name of the group that made Samus Returns, but it was once Samus Returns came out, Sakamoto said, I think we may have something here. And so he brought back Metroid Dread and grabbed the team that made Samus Returns and said, Hey, can you do something for me? And shockingly, with almost no build-up, 
almost no hype, some early release information, almost nothing. Nintendo came out and said, Hey, you know, in like a month and a half, you're getting Metroid 5. And the world lost its crap. And that is Metroid Dread. Um, having played through Metroid Dread at this point, I actually think it is an amazing game. There are a f choice few small things that I feel um, could be improved upon, and a choice few other things that I don't feel like appeal to my specific tastes, my personal tastes, in what I want out of a Metroid game. But I feel like they did what they wanted to do. They absolutely sat down in the same way that Super Metroid had the two games prior to refine what they wanted the game to be, to learn from, and to make something using all the information they'd had from at that point. In that same way, they did something new with Fusion. And from Fusion, they went on to experiment and discover where they want to go and how they want to do it. And it's taken a number of games, but I feel like Metroid Dread is in the same way that refined experience that gives exactly what they wanted to accomplish. So without going on even more of a large discussion. Let's dive into Metroid Dread. So one of the first things I noticed was this is all you got out of the title screen. If you recall Metroid Fusion, they actually set up a little scene. They showed something happening to Samus, and they drew you in the, with the prospects of this story. Whereas something like Super Metroid gave you almost no story. They gave you a bit of a scene, perhaps, but mostly pushed emotion. This feeling you're supposed to have. Metroid Dread. All we saw was that mechanical red eye, which then became something of a planet. This is all we have and the music that's playing. This is very much emphasizing an emotion, a mood that they want you to experience. I am not playing on hard mode. Normal is hard enough. They do give you a... I think this is interesting, because on one hand, this is the same background music that played in the text crawl at the start of Super Metroid. They're also, for those of you who may be new to the Metroid series, because of course not everyone has played every Metroid game and knows everything that's going on, they actually give you a bit of story. It comes in text form, it's not vocalized, but this does mean you can mash through it at whatever speed you want to, unlike the intro to Super Metroid, which after you've seen 16 times, you kind of just want to hurry along. So, Metroid. A virulent, virulent, vir a virulent floating organism that drained energy from its prey through physical contact. Metroids were originally created by the Chozo and named after their word for Ultimate Warrior. Their value as a bioweapon sparked several crises, and as a result, all traces of them have been eliminated. They are now extinct. X-Parasite A gelatinous, parasitic 
organism indigenous to the planet SR388. It can absorb the DNA of its host, living or dead, and replicate its form. When infecting a living host, it could even access the host's memories. Ex-parasites were driven not by emotion, but by an instinctive need to replicate and spread to increasingly stronger hosts. Their inability to be controlled marked them as even more dangerous than their sole predator, the Metroids. Like the Metroids, they are believed extinct. With no Metroid surviving on SR388, it became infested with the X, horrifying parasites capable of imitating any living being. Unaware of this, I set foot on the planet, got infected, and almost died. The only thing that saved me was a vaccine created from Metroid DNA, which also left me uniquely able to oppose the X. This ability was tested immediately when I went to a Biologic Space Laboratories BSL, research station to investigate a distress signal. Also recall most of her armor had to be removed. The only thing that was left was the more organic components. It's also theorized that this is why she took so much more damage in Metroid Fusion, as most of the armor part of her armor had been removed. Also on the previous screen, did you see the little pixel NES Metroid sprite at the top? There, I battled with many powerful X forms, including the SAX, which was the X mimicking me in my power suit at full strength. I eventually eliminated the X menace on SR388 by setting the BSL research station on a collision course with the planet. This was the end of fusion, destroying both the BSL research station and the planet which in turn also removed all known um, sources of the X and the remaining Metroids on the station. After that, the X and Metroids were just memories. Or so we thought. Just when it all seemed over, the Galactic Federation received a mysterious video transmission. It showed an X, alive and in the wild. Thorough analysis proved the video was real. Although the sender was unknown, the transmission was traced to a particular planet. It was called ZDR. If the X had somehow escaped extinction out there, they would pose a threat to the entire galaxy. The Galactic Federation dispatched a research team of seven Emmy to investigate. An Emmy is a large research robot designed to capture field samples and extract their DNA. Their incredible mobility and protective plating, made of the strongest stuff in the universe, practically guaranteed the mission's success. 
but not long after their arrival on ZDR, all communication was lost. What is happening on ZDR? Is the planet really infested with X? As the only one immune to the parasites, it's up to me to go there and find out. elevator leads to the depths of an underground facility. Signal quality is likely to be low. Remote communication remains useful. Try to connect to the facility's network when you reach the bottom. That way, can you gain in contact? Any objections, please? And we are in control. Having, without saying much, having just recently beaten the game and seeing that intro again, that was neat. I, I want to say more, but I can't, but it was neat. But we're now in the depths of ZDR. That is too great a gap for us to reach going back, and if you look, 
the elevator's been destroyed. So we can't go back. That's cool. We're also stranded down here. Recall that our computer is Adam, who is effectively the an AI modeled. It was the personality and mindset of our old commanding officer uploaded to a computer that was given to us by the Federation. Which means Adam is... He's effectively a Federation commanding officer. But not anymore. Which was neat because you saw him speaking of the Emmys as being our property but also talking a lot about the bounty not being worth it at all. Samus, of course, has a very strong sense of justice, sense of right and wrong. She is here because she knows these need to be taken care of if the X is here. Bounty almost doesn't come into the equation. But so we traveled down, traveled down to the base of ZDR, and immediately got bodied. We've lost all our power-ups. We can no longer morph. I can shoot. I have missiles, too. So I got that. And that's it. I can also do that. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the first things that you may notice about this game, especially once we start genuinely running around, movement is smooth as silk. You want to get somewhere? It's great. Just the little bits of moving, hopping, stepping up. Um, wall jumping exists. It's actually fairly easy to do. You can also ledge grab fairly easily, hop up. Um, the wall jumping has gone to a more traditional, more common degree of wall jumping, which is simply be spinning and pushing against the wall and hit jump, and you will get jettisoned off in the other direction. So we have a door here that does not respond to us. So the last thing to point out is why does Samus have armor on? She's not wearing the fusion suit. And this goes to what I mentioned before, where the armor, the metallic parts of her suit, had been removed, leaving only the soft underbelly, the organic components. I don't think it's been explained outright, but the idea is that since the suit is biomechanical, it has effectively, over time, been regrowing the armor. Which I think was a really neat way for them to give Samus a slightly more normal Samus look instead of going, okay, well, we have to start with the fusion suit and go from there when for sure they want to give Samus a new look, an updated look, not just to be the more mechanical, more commonly known one, but also just to update it over the time anyway. And that makes sense. So, first things first, I'm, I really dig the black and white contrast here. So, our first enemy doesn't do a lot, kind of looks at you. Doesn't even do that, really. If you shoot it, it moves faster, but that's about it. And eventually it dies. See all the enemies running off in the distance. Yeah, you can't morph, but you can slide. And then there's also this. Um, so the free aim was taken from Samus Returns. A lot of this feels like they took what was in Samus Returns and used that as a base to refine it immensely. So, free aim is back, which is great. Uh, you use the shoulder button, which in Super, the shoulder button 
let you aim diagonally down, or one shoulder button aim diagonally down, the other shoulder button aim diagonally up. In Fusion, they combined that into one button, where the one button aimed you up, and then you had to physically press a different direction. I mentioned that feeling a little bit weird, but here, simply the one shoulder button putting you directly into an aim mode, where you can now look around. You cannot move while you're free aiming, though. But that's fine, honestly, because you just need to go BAM, and then you're off and go running in the other direction. Just You can even see the neat little animation where Samus is, like, going the one way but shooting behind her. Like I'm, I mentioned, the controls are smooth as silk. Um, amazingly responsive. Absolutely whatever you want to do, you will do. Like, they nailed that brain-to-game connection spot on. Um, okay, so, obviously we can't go through this door, much like we couldn't go through the other one, but that sure looks weird and pulsating. And it explodes. So these things return from um, Metroid 2, Return of Samus. Just the infinite little Metroid, or infinite little enemy spawners where they kind of fly down and do the thing. Got this big tubbo here. It's kind of gross. So you can hold onto ledges just like that, that you saw. These blocks with the large white circle on them are uh, beam blocks, can be destroyed if you shoot them. This, we can't fit in there. Because the only way we can move is by sliding, and we can't really slide through that. Maybe if we dive in, just head first. So you'll see platforms like this around. These platforms will restore various things depending on their color. This one uh, refills your missiles. Oh, um, also, yeah, you can duck. You can duck and do the thing. Or you could just, like, free aim down. So, you've accessed the network station. Well done, Samus. I have reviewed your vital signs and video log from the data you uploaded. Well, at least we managed to get in contact with Adam, so we're not completely stranded down here. I've run a full analysis, but I cannot account for why you lost consciousness. My readings indicate dramatic physical changes in you. Yeah. Lost all our poop. Whatever caused these changes seems to have stripped you of most abilities. You might call it physical amnesia. Okay. That brings me to your assailant. I am checking the Federation database against your video log. It appears to have been a Chozo. The attacker's identity is not yet clear. After all, the Chozo aren't necessarily extinct. They knew this, the race was reaching its end, but they kind of just left. Most of them died. You know, mother brain. I have determined that you are somewhere within the depths of CPR. Your top priority should be to return to your ship on the surface. This situation is precarious. Trust your instincts as you navigate upward. This planet appears to consist of multiple areas, shuttles, elevators, and other modes of transport connect them. Keep an eye out for ways to reach the surface. The ship's location is marked on your global map. Check it for yourself. You may encounter pockets of low temperature. Your metro DNA renders you vulnerable to such environments. Spending time in cold areas will be harmful to you. There are many such cold areas scattered underground. Do not enter them with your basic power suit. Yeah, try and stop me. One final thing. Underground interference is preventing radio transmissions. Check in with me at any network stations you find. 
You know, I always wondered, since Samus was always talking to Adam back on the back in Fusion, I was like, how does Samus not recognize that this is Adam's voice or whatever? And like, no, it's if it's some weird synthetic voice like this, I get that crap. I get it. Yep. Look at that power stance that she's got. Like, if you want a Samus that can just kick the crap out of you, this is your Samus. Like, I'd mention, it's been not only mentioned by me, but by other people that Samus, I feels like she almost became more of an anime character over time, just like trying to make her more emotional and uh, emotional and attractive and like, but the Samus we wanted was the one that could just bend you over and snap your neck. Just like kick the cr absolute crap out of you. And this is your Samus if you want that. She doesn't talk a lot, but she's here to mess you up. Okay, so you can open the map. Um, the map in this game is phenomenal. Unbelievable. Not only does it show you what rooms you've been in, not only does it label what blocks you have encountered, but it shows where you have been in each room. So I know, I didn't go in the top of this room. I can see over here that I didn't, like, jump up and look up here. So maybe if I can't find something, I should go back and look up here. This also labels things you don't know. We encountered this door. We know it's a door, and it's labeled here as a door, but we do not know what opened it. Um, it shows the little gap. It's not even a square room. It shows you block for block on the grid what is in every room. The map is phenomenal. I, honest to goodness, probably spend more time on the map than I do in the game itself. Like, I don't need to re-traverse the entire map to go, hey, did I miss anything in this area? And run through the whole thing again. You can just look at the map to do it. Which also helps because this game is massive! Uh, hey. So this is... Okay, it's not the other side of that door that we were in before. Ah! He's big! The melee counter returns from... Well, Samus Returns. My complaint with Samus Returns was that it felt like a focused gimmick. You effectively had to use the counter against everything, or you had no hope of killing anything. Um, everything just had way too much HP, and generally put itself in, vul in invulnerable states that you had to counter to get them out of. This game handles it far, far better. Um, you, the counter is treated, instead of as a focused gimmick, as just another mechanic. You got missiles, you got beams, you got morph balls, you got a counter. And you know when to use it when you see that mark. The counter is good because it gives you a effectively a full charge. Even though we don't have the charge beam. Um, and puts the enemy in a vulnerable state. When you hit an enemy after the charge and shoot them, you will do an unbelievable amount of damage. I'm also bad at it.
Uh, I kind of don't want to go down there. That guy's, that guy's gonna be problems. I hit it, but I wasn't in a position to do anything about it. Okay, so we can't get up there. Okay. Oh, there we go. So this is another thing that really helps out in trying to find, well, like, items and things around. There's an item on this map, or on this screen somewhere. Where is it? Who knows? But it's at least blinking, so you know it's somewhere. And you will get tools as the game goes on to assist you with um, finding that item. Right now, I don't know anything, but I know I see a little pink thing right there. Oh, um, notice the map. See, I'm shooting, like, right up here where the pink thing is. Now look at the map. Big old chunky thing here, small hole right here to go through. Missile that we couldn't see before. The map updates as you change it and as you discover things. Which means just because you don't see something here doesn't mean there isn't something there. I love this because even though they give you so many tools to help find things, especially as the game goes on, you still have to find it. Um, even something like down here. You see, this is a beam block. This block right above it, I think I may have shot it by accident, but it could also be a beam block. But because I didn't shoot it, it just displays it as wall, because from what I saw walking through, it was wall. Had I shot it and discovered it was a beam block, it would show two beam blocks here. I actually forget. I don't think it's a beam block, but just as an example. So that was a missile expansion. We already have missiles, but that gave us, um, what is it, five, two more? Cool stuff. Oh, heck. And now I'm here. Radar. can, in fact, if an Emmy catches you, you can, in fact, knock it back and get out of it. As it says, this is very difficult. There, I think the window is smaller on it, and there's very little indication of when exactly to hit it. I've hit it on, I've hit it before, but honest to goodness, if you get caught by an Emmy, I've found even if you manage to break out, you're probably just dead anyway. Like, you got into a bad spot for a reason. Okay, while it's stunned, get the heck out! Oh no, you can slide out. Got it. Cool. I'm gone. Later, nerd! Okay, not going up there. Oh, it's trying real hard. It's trying real hard, but without that arm, it can't do it. Mega Cannon. This 
so once you get the Omega Cannon, hold L to enter aim mode, which is what we did before. Only now when you do it, it goes into this, like, third person angle. You can aim around, that lights up, and that looks an awfully lot like the Emmy's eye. While in this mode, hold R to charge, which is the missile button. And once charged, it's the ready missile button, not the shoot missile button. And once charged, press Y, press y which is the shoot button, to shoot. So the ready missile button. I don't see it down there anymore. Hey, buddy! So here we've been instructed on how exactly we'll be handling the Emmys. None of them will be this easy again. This odd brain looking thing we can absorb an amount of energy from. This turns on the Omega Blaster. The Omega Blaster is the only weapon capable of destroying an Emmy. I don't know if the Omega Blaster's power is somehow routed through the Emmy itself, but you can fire it as many times as you want. But once you kill an Emmy with it, it goes away. Hey. So you'll see doors like this, where we approach this from this side, and this was shuttered closed. But it was a regular door on this side. Once we shoot it here, you saw the door kind of struggle to open. That has now permanently opened this door, so you can go back and forth. They're like one-way doors. And now that we're back here on the other side, we've collected our item... And we can go up here, which brings us to a save room. Also, you may have noticed the little, like, fibrous parts on Samus's suit. You could say that's kind of a leftover from the fusion suit. I think it's neat because it shows that the suit's not quite done healing itself yet. There's still a little bit of that muscle membrane down underneath. But with that save, we've explored through the intro. We've destroyed our first Emmy in what was effectively a tutorial and made our way to a save station. Progress has been slow, and this has been kind of a long video, but I will say, until next time, everyone, now that we've been introduced to the game, let's really dive in and get wrecking. Until next time, everyone. <laughs>